So not too long ago, I made a video about a dividend ETF under the ticker JEPI, JEPI, with an insane 12% dividend yield. Now this video exploded and I got hundreds of comments asking me to review different types of dividend ETFs. Now you have to understand that high dividends are often unsustainable and sometimes are seen as a scam. This is because a company will provide unbelievably high dividends to counter its dropping stock price in order to lure investors. And this is where the term dividend trap comes from. You see, the only way you can truly evaluate an individual company's or an ETF's dividend return is by looking at the history. Companies that have a strong and long track record of dividend yield is a key indication of their growth, strength, and performance. And my biggest problem with JEPI is its recent inception date. This means that despite its almost 12% dividend yield, which again is insane, it doesn't really have a history that I can track in order to justify its dividend return. So that 12% yield could drop significantly and investors might not like the fluctuation. Plus its stock price could also drop significantly as well. So I wanted to know if there's a dividend ETF that provides a similar yield to JEPI, but also has a much longer track record. That way its dividend is justifiable and trustworthy. And I found that subscribing to my channel is the best option. You know I had to do it. But if you could please subscribe to my channel and give this video a like for the YouTube algorithm, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Let's continue. XYLD. This is the Global X S&P 500 Covered Call ETF. This ETF was established in 2014, so it is much older than JEPI, and it currently has an insane dividend yield of 12.91% distributed every month. So how does it do this? Well, XYLD tracks the S&P 500 index, and its key investment approach is selling one month at the money call options on up to 100% of each stock, essentially doing what's called a long short position. And for those who don't know, a one month at the money covered call means that you're selling a call option with one month from expiration at a strike price that is equal to the current stock price. So for example, if Apple trades at $150 on January 1st, they will sell the $150 call option expiring in 30 days and collect the premium. This ETF has $2.4 billion of assets under management, which is great, and an expense ratio of 0.65%, which is a little on the higher end, but just for reference, for every $10,000 you invest, you pay an annual fee of $65. This ETF has holdings in all of the companies within the S&P 500, and if we look at its holdings breakdown, we see that Apple is at the top, making up close to 7% of its holdings, with Microsoft and Amazon making up 5.93% and 2 2.56%. This is exactly the same asset allocation as the very well-known S&P 500 ETF, SPY. So yes, another covered call ETF that provides close to 13% in dividends. So is this a dividend trap? Well, let's do some further analysis. This chart shows the ETF's dividend yield, and this is what I wanted to focus on. Because the ETF was established in 2014, it has a much longer track record of providing dividends, in comparison to JEPI, which was only established in 2020. And its yield has been relatively consistent with actual growth, especially in this period where the dividend yield nearly quadrupled from 0.06 to 0.25. And looking at the trailing 12 months dividend chart, you see an average growth in dividend yield. Okay, now let's compare the performance of the CTF side by side with the S&P 500. So you can see that the S&P 500 has outperformed this ETF by nearly 20% in the long run, which frankly it's expected. Because if you are selling call options against stock that you own, although you receive very good premium, if the stock continues to grow, you miss out on that growth. And we all know that the S&P 500 in the long run, based on past performance, has always shown positive returns, averaging between nine and 10%. But it's the shorter time frame that stands out. XYLD has outperformed the S&P 500 by close to 3% within the one month time period. During periods of stock declines, since the start of 2022, the beginning of the bear market that we are currently in, the S&P 500 has lost more than 15% but XYLD has lost only 9%. 
outperforming the S&P 500 by more than 6%. As a result, this ETF has seen significantly less volatility than the S&P 500. And looking at the volatility analysis, you can see that over a 200 day period, XYLD only experienced 9% relative volatility. And that is half of what the S&P 500 experienced with over 20%. And again, this is where the ETF shines most. Now here's where it gets interesting. If we compare the performance of XYLD side by side with JEPI, you see a much bigger difference. XYLD has outperformed JEPI by more than 4% year to date and by nearly 5% in its three month return. This is pretty significant. And the reason for this is because XYLD is a long short ETF on the S&P 500, which by weight is primarily tech stocks, whereas JEPI has equal holdings and a lot of non tech stocks like Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, Visa, Hershey's, etc. And within the last three months, the tech sector has seen quite a significant rally resulting in better returns. So here's my verdict. My biggest problem with covered call ETFs is the drag on its growth potential. When you compare the S&P 500 chart side by side with the XYLD chart, during the periods of growth, you see that the XYLD chart is a lot less exaggerated and simply put, it just doesn't grow as much. You see, a covered call strategy should primarily be used in a bear or a neutral slash sideways trending market because this is when stocks are simply trending sideways or lacking growth and you can make significant income by utilizing the premium collected from covered calls. Now using this strategy all the time won't really be of much benefit and that goes for Jeppy as well and in the end, they will never outperform the S&P 500. So this chart shows how much a $10,000 investment would be worth with dividend reinvested since the inception of XYLD. And on average, you would see a return of close to 7% per year, which is not that bad. So if you were to invest $10,000 in XYLD starting June of 2013, which is its inception date, with dividends reinvested, you would have $18,628 by today. Now, if we consider the exact same time frame and compare a $10,000 investment in the S&P 500, you will see an average annual return of 11.6%, bringing your $10,000 initial investment to almost $30,000. This is nearly double. And remember, this calculation is with dividends reinvested. Seeing such a high dividend yield is extremely attractive because in a way it's saying, here, this is free money but every investor's primary objective should be growth before dividends. Well, actually it should be a combination of both. And this is exactly why SCHD is by far one of the best ETFs that you can invest into. And that is all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next one.